Am I allowed to smoke on your talk show? Of course, smoking's allowed on this talk show. Uh, good morning. I'm sitting here at Schloss, what is this, Schloss Torvald? Something like that. We're sitting at some Schloss, uh, somewhere in Germany, north of Berlin, in the middle of uh, one of the least densely populated parts of Germany. I think, so, what is it, less than 200 people per... No, one per 200 square kilometers. Oh, one person per 200 square kilometers. That's where we are right now, because we've just bumped that number up significantly with our uh, party force. Um, so, Chris. Yeah. I, I understand that you're into surfing. I surf, yeah. So, where do you, where, where do you surf? When I surf, I'm, first of all, I'm not good, but I like okay. it a lot. And That's the beginning of getting good, liking it. For some people, I don't know, but you have to surf a lot, I think, to get good. But I started surfing in France on a road trip. And then I also surfed in the Netherlands, where I grew up. And now, basically, I go surf every summer. Wow. It's kind of news to me that you can surf in Europe. But I guess if people surf in Newfoundland, they can surf in the Netherlands. As long as there's water and waves. You need waves, but you don't need big waves to surf. Well, so surfing has been like a, a big metaphor for a lot of people. What about surfing appeals to you? Like what's the, why do you like it so much? I like being in the water, first of all. Okay. I like uh, being in the water with friends. I like making, like behaving childish in the water and just having, having a good time. I like um, uh, the, the, the maybe, I don't know, I just, for me it's not a metaphor, it's just having a good time and, and trying to catch a wave. Like, I don't want to make it bigger than it is. Yeah, it's just what it is. Yeah. That's really good. Do you have any tips for like, for me, like, I can't, I can't even imagine beginning to do that. Like, how do you, how do you start to catch a wave? What's like a step-by-step, -step, like five-point system to catching a wave? <laughs> All right, like I said, I'm not a good surfer, so maybe I'm not the best the surf coach for you. Uh -huh. But what you're gonna want to do is just uh, 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 you should you should learn how to catch a wave. So maybe you want to start with body surfing or something like that. So you can try to catch a, like you get the what you want is you you want to get your timing good. So you want to like paddle on the, at the right time. So you want to make speed first, and you need a little bit of speed. Catch the wave, yeah. and then when, you're, when you get that, you're gonna try it with a board. Okay. That's what I think. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a have a good time at the rest of this crazy castle. Do you know when we're leaving? Are we leaving tonight or tomorrow? I think we're leaving tomorrow morning. Okay. This was it. This 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 was the interview about surfing. Yeah, this is about surfing. All Anything right. else you want to talk about? I don't know. It's not the most interesting part. I think. Really? I think no. it's so interesting. Okay. So okay, another quick question. You're really into information design. Now. What, because for a lot of people, taking information mm -hmm. and turning it into an image mm -hmm. is, is an impossible task. Like the idea of taking information, and turning it into an image, anything other than like a bar graph or like mm -hmm. a line chart makes mm -hmm. no sense. Um, how, how, how do you see information? I mean, how do you translate information into a visual? I guess what I was saying is like, in, how in your head do you see information? First of all, like, there's two types of information design. Yeah. Sometimes you want to just visualize information the way it is, but sometimes you want to change the context and tell a story with it. And I think that's the most interesting part. That's also the most difficult. Mm. So there's been a lot of trends in information design, and some people like to call it data visualization. And I think what you want to do is you want to first, you want to get the story straight. So you want to see. You have to know what you want to tell, and that's the hardest part for me also. Yeah. And then you want to find the right information, the right information source. Yeah. And if you can do that, I think you can like, tell amazing stories with information. And that's also what we're working on. That's the magic. That's where the magic happens. Because, it is. Uh, you basically have to invent something new. It is. Ah. So what are you inventing? Information design. <laughs> Yeah. So we're going to interview Siesh yeah. next. Thanks for coming on the yeah. show, by no, the way. This yeah. is really good. Oh. Amazing. No, please, Siesh. Yeah, so yes. Siesh, come here. You, you've already walked in the frame. You've got to be on the show. Thank you. Highest, ladies and gentlemen. Highest. Siesh, please. So sitting with me right now, ladies and gentlemen, I have an actual yeah. um, 
management level employee of the Tata Corporation, which is maybe one, the, possibly the most important company in India. No. Um, now, Tata Corp is ba was founded on these core ethical values. Yeah, we have Tata Code of Conduct. Yeah. Can you explain, just, just for the audience, just so they understand what the Code of Conduct is in brief? Uh, it, it's like, uh, as, as a Tata group, uh, we always go by this Code of Conduct in which we are always abided by doing everything ethically. There is no way we can go unethical to gain a business or a profit. And uh, one of the very important or the integral part of Tata Code of Conduct is giving back to the society what you get, get from them. So, yeah, we do care about the society and we don't always go for our benefits, but ethically we get the benefits and uh, do give back something to the society. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, so you work, Tata's most famous in the West for the, the world's cheapest car, yeah, so the car for the people, Tata. the Tata Nada. Yeah. But you're working in the communications division. Yeah. Um, I, I work in the IT part, Tata Consultancy Services, which yeah. is a, uh, this is the Asia's biggest uh, ID company. It has around 147 million. So, one of the biggest. Yeah. 7 billion in revenue. So, yeah. that's big. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, that's like bigger than many cities. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's incredible. Um, so, what do you think, um, like with, with Tata Core, what do you think? Do you think Tata has the capability? Do you think Tata is changing the world? Yeah, of course. Uh, just imagine uh, something like Tata Nano coming in where that even the, the lower middle class who wouldn't have even thought about uh, getting a car for themselves uh, but now can actually afford it. So mm -hmm. that, that's what the basic aim of the group is that to get uh, good things across to the lowest strata of the society and help them to grow up and you know mm -hmm. be at the same level as the rest of the people. You know? For me, what I think is most interesting about Tata yeah. is how an Indian business for Indian people. Absolutely. Also with an eye to a global market. Yeah. So they, they, they always think as a, as a localized in the world. They, we are spread across uh, more than 40 countries. Mm -hmm. so you can see that, you know, it's all global and uh, we do have a lot of global workforce. As, as a matter of fact, we have around 8 to 12 percent of our workforce in DCS as uh, the global workforce which are not Indians. Yeah. So, yeah. Incredible. I guess my my final uh, my final question to you would be, how do you think you're going to work for Tata for the rest of your life? Yeah, because uh, maybe because the company is like it's it's so good. It has given me so much in return. Uh, I've not been a lot of uh, I've not had a lot of experience till coming up in a role which is which requires a lot of experience. And they took this gamble and they just they saw that I'm good enough for the job and they just without a fear of it they just gave it to me. Amazing. Well, you are a talented man, I gotta say. This, this is a talented man and he knows a lot, especially about communications. Anyhow. I try to. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having breakfast with me. Thank you so much, Zizi. Bye. Ciao. So I'm sitting here with Ernst, also known as Ernesto, who's a, a very important mentor to us here at Palomar 5. Um, now, Ernst, is this, this is Schloss, what, what Schloss is this? Schloss Torno. Schloss Torno, okay. Now, are you responsible for suggesting this place? Mm, yes. <laughs> it's a good one. It's definitely a good one. Yeah, it was, uh, it was lucky that we found it because originally we wanted to make some survivor training with you. Oh, no. No survivor training, please. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is Simon, by the way, also a very important Palomar 5 member. You are just, uh, just in, time. in the movie show. Yeah. Oh. Just in time for an interview. Um, so we came here. We came here by boat. We actually like paddled canoes for over six kilometers to get here. Um, and Ernst, there seems to be a thread. Ernst is an artist, very interesting painter, performance artist, um, instigator, I would say. Um, and in your work, you seem to have this thread of experience as metaphor for life. So what would you? How, what would you say about this, this entire castle experience we've had? It's, it's also Halloween. It was Halloween last night, and we had a very, very traditional night of, um, of, uh, of dualities, darkness and light. Um, <laughs> more darkness. <laughs> more darkness than light, but the light still has to be there for the yeah. darkness to, mm -hmm. to reveal itself. Yes, it needs it to each other. Yeah. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe guide, guide, us through, guide us through the journey as if it were life in its entirety. Mm, I think uh, especially when 
digital natives are working and uh, their sphere it's necessary to step out and not to forget where we come from and to touch nature to, to feel it and to have some some situations which are extraordinary not 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 daily yeah. Yeah. daily business because I think this is our soul needed and uh, yeah sometimes it's uh, forced by interrupting this rhythm of just trying to invent something yeah yeah and therefore I like it to, to uh, I don't want to have too much metaphors or too much okay. symbols but I think uh, this is the original being uh, yeah, together with nature to, to live life is also could be a metaphor yeah. sometimes and sometimes you discover it and sometimes you, st you have to step out and just be yeah. you have to realize that mm. that we're not just in a, on the internet we're also in the world the real you know world. what I, what I really what I'm really amazed and really happy about this group here that you bring all such a big big human factor and positive human factor in. and this is for me that's so important for whatever you are inventing this is the basis yeah. and if the basis is not okay then I don't like the ideas to yeah. because we have to anchor the ideas we have to, to present it we have to bring it out yeah. and this is therefore we, we do this effort to to make these situations that you feel well motivated from inside it has to come from like a human core yeah. and not from just doing something for the sake of it being new that's beautiful, and I think that's actually um, something that we constantly need to remind ourselves in everything in life. Yeah. 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 Did you think you are both individualists? That you are good as individualists, but uh, you have to have the ability very, very, very quickly to make a good society and to have a strong society as a group. Yeah. And this is this is what this is a, a value you have to create every day. first impressions when they come to this project is they see the group and they wow, what a, what a, yeah. Yeah, what a, what a good atmosphere is here. Yeah. And I think that was the, the ideas can fly. The first job is to your community and your peers, yeah. always. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. See you next week. <laughs>